Hey everybody, it is Tanya Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to episode number eight of Poshmark Talk. We're so happy to be here. It's been a while since we've done a show. Um, and today we have a special guest, but we'll get to her in just a second. So Lauren, you want to take it off? Take over? Yes, I'm Lauren, Hot Chic Thrift. Um, I love Poshmark. I'm obsessed with Poshmark. <laughs> All of you know this that already watch our show. <laughs> Andy. Oh, it's going to me now. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Andy, the Parrot Head Picker. Um, yeah, I'm uh, pretty, I don't want to say I'm pretty new, but I'm still pretty new to uh, Poshmark. Been on here almost a year now. Um, I think about March. Uh, thanks to Lauren, she got me onto this. And uh, I really love the platform. Uh, it's so easy to cross post from eBay and stuff like that. So, uh, and it's just, honestly, I'm really surprised at the money I've made over here already this year. So it's uh, definitely been uh, a, a nice journey and uh, I'm hoping to increase that a little bit further. So. Awesome. You guys, if you guys have any questions that are watching the show tonight, please leave them in the chat so we can take an answer because uh, we're a little light tonight. <laughs> right. And I have to make a comment about what I just said, Lauren, take it off. I mean, seriously, guys, it's been a while since I've gone live. <laughs> I'm just a little nervous. Okay. So I know, right? I'm with friends. Um, so our special guest today is Tammy from Tam Slay here on YouTube. And welcome, and tell us a little bit about your Poshmark journey. Okay, I am Tammy with Tam's Place, and I have been uh, on Poshmark for probably since uh, maybe March, end of February, first part of March. And uh, I love it, love Poshmark. It's not a full-time gig for me, it's just part-time, um, but I like it. I always like learning about it and you know, learning the different things. I still have lots of questions. There's lots of things that I already know about Poshmark, but I still have lots of questions. So having a good time selling on it and uh, hope to eventually get my closet built up a little bit more and sell more. <laughs> yeah, you're doing really good. So one of the things uh, we all agreed that we would talk about today was the new category of gifts on Poshmark. So have you guys experimented with this and listed anything there? Or done anything with it? I, I haven't. I've kind of explored it a little bit because uh, when I seen the idea of uh, gifts, I was like, ooh, are they just going to open this? Is this going to be like open season now on Poshmark and I can put anything up here as a gift? But uh, That's what I was thinking too. I was thinking, all right, I'm going to be able to sell coffee. Yeah, I was like, what man, I go, I can start unloading coffee bugs on here and, right. you know, like Bibles and everything else, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, but yeah. Um, but I, I really haven't, it, it seems to be that people are just putting their regular stuff in the gifts category, so. Right, like what I noticed is Poshmark went and put all of my new with tag stuff in the gift category. Oh, so they're actually moving, they're actually moving things to that category? I don't and, know if they moved it, did they, Tammy? Well, it's, I think everything that people have that's new with tags falls under the gift category. That's what I've seen so far. I don't know that you can actually post into the gift category. Lauren, what do you know about that? Can no, I really I don't think know. it has to be new, I think. Has to be brand like new with tags. Yeah, new I think tags. it has to be brand new. Okay. So I'm wondering like if that's like an option to list like as a second category, because of course you'd want to list it in its main category first, right? So people could find it. You know what I mean? Doesn't that make sense? Let me look actually. No, I'm curious. I really haven't uh, heard too many people talking about it either. Yeah, I didn't. And I've actually like tried to see like if when I put like my own listing up, I don't even see the gifts category. So yeah, I um, don't think that you can list to the gifts category. So, so it, list, it just goes to the gifts. Yeah, if it's new yeah, tag. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think so what you're saying then yeah, totally makes sense that they may be moving those your yeah. items to that area, and yeah. and maybe that'll keep people from putting you know, their, their video games and That's you know what I'm saying? Right. Their coffee mugs and all that stuff up on there. Yeah. Right. It sounds like they're in control of it. I think Lauren's looking. <laughs> Could be. It doesn't really say anything, but everything that I see in there is new, at least when I click like on the stuff that's listed. So I'm guessing it just pulls everything that's new with tags. Yeah. Karen Curry was just saying that most of uh, her new tag items were all moved, but not all of them. So yeah, that's that's something I might have to actually uh, explore myself on my just to see. I, I don't have a lot of new tag items on there, but I do have a few. So right. 
Um, did anyone want to add anything else to that? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> we, we were really unprepared today, but uh, <laughs> I'll write down some stuff. It's okay. I've got a little list here. Just come uh, and laugh at us, everyone. It's fine. <laughs> So um, I wrote down, like, I know I've probably talked about this before, but I thought we'd like touch on like tanked markets, like maybe some brands that are not selling as well that you might want to pass up when you're out at the thrifts. And for me, I've noticed it has been um, the Vera Bradley for sure. Like I never buy that anymore because it just doesn't move. And whenever I do sell it, I end up selling it for pretty much what I bought it for. Um, and then also the LuLaRoe. Like I spent a hundred bucks and I bought a whole bunch of brand new with tags and um, I still haven't even sold one piece yet. So put it on Mercari. Yeah, I need to. Or eBay and do it as an auction on eBay and it'll move. Sorry, we're on Poshmark yeah. talk. I shouldn't. I know. That now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I think a lot of people though that are that yeah. are watching this, they're probably selling on multiple platforms anyway, or you know they're thinking about coming to this platform. So it's still all good. You know, we can give all the platforms love. I mean, it's it's okay, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, I've got I've got a Lula Roll uh, polo shirt, just a really nice polo shirt that was new at Tags, and yeah, I haven't been able to move that thing at all. So yeah. that's. And I don't want to mark it down to nothing because, you know, if I do that, then people are still going to send me a lowball offer and I'm already offering it for nothing. It just drives me nuts. Right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing on Poshmark, you know, and that's the thing on Poshmark, like I, I don't I have any of my stuff marked low at all. I mean, that because, yeah, you have to account for that, uh, that lowball offer or that just room to negotiate in there. So pretty much everything that I have cross posted, it doesn't matter. Um, my eBay stuff to my Poshmark stuff, everything is always about uh, at, at least 10, if not 20% higher on Poshmark. And, but though typically a lot of times I'll get that extra 20% on Posh. Right. Yeah. You do really good on Poshmark, Andy. Yeah, actually, um, I, I'm going to put a video out. I got a video I just made um, yesterday and it'll probably go live. I'm guessing tomorrow. Um, it's just like 16 items I sold over on Poshmark, but the money I got for these items was amazing compared to what I would have gotten on eBay. And a lot, and some of these things were like just items that people just paid. They just bought straight out. And I'm like, Oh my God, I go, I can't believe they didn't even negotiate on this. And you know, I mean, I've got, you know, this price or that price. So uh, yeah, that'll probably go up. Uh, I'm assuming probably tomorrow. I yeah. honestly think the reason for that is that Poshmark for some reason, their platform meshes way better with Google search than eBay. So right. like if you went and searched your item or searched like, okay, so I have these Louboutins behind me listed on Poshmark. If I searched for the shoe and the print, my listing would come up first in Google search, but under Poshmark, under like the Google shopping tab. And I think that's why Poshmark does so well with the higher priced items, because you're getting pulls from search engines, not just the platform. Right. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times, yeah, a lot of the buyers that I do get are people with very, very little feedback. They're almost like a lot of newer people. So yeah, I think it's people that have found the items on a search or something like that. Mm -hmm. But and I also like in my item description, a lot of times I try to use a lot like because they give you I don't know how many characters it is. It's not a whole lot of characters for your item, but I fill that up. Mine is is yeah. really full. I mean, I, I put as many because every one of those words is a keyword. It's a search identifier. It's something that, you know, Google is going to pull. So I try to have as many, you know, words or things in there because, you know, in your regular item description, you only get, you know, so many spaces, which is really, really small even compared to eBay. So, you know, I, I could only get, you know, uh, extra large blue men's, you know, button shirt or, you know, polo shirt, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? I can only get like just a couple little things. But when I do my very first line of my item description, I try to have as much stuff as I can there. And then I put all as many other little things, you know, it's, it's cotton. It's, you know, it's a short, it's short sleeve, uh, all the measurements that, you know, anything else that I can add to that, you know, I mean, I try to put in my, in my description. I think I get a lot of polls that way. That is the best tip that's going to come out of this entire show. <laughs> and actually that's something I was going to bring up later, but we started talking about it now. My goal for January 1st is I want to go through every single listing that's available in my Poshmark closet and yeah. just tab down and make sure that I, oh, I'm a puppy. Right? My dog, I'm upstairs, oh. so my dog will not go in my basement. So yeah, oh, she's a, she's you don't like the basement? 
what no she she's a she's a rescue dog so you know we don't know what all happened to her we got her but in it we think she might have been kept in the basement but she won't even look downstairs like i kind of back off her that's the way to go outside or down to my basement and yeah my dog will not even look to go downstairs even when she comes in from outside she just darts straight into the house but yeah so she will not in like when it storms or we have tornadoes my wife's always like what are we gonna do with Lucy? I'm like going, well, we either carry her downstairs or we'll figure it out. She goes, she won't, she freaks out. I mean, other than that, but I mean, she's just a huge baby, but. <laughs> you wait, she have an outfit on her day. She usually. No, she doesn't. Thank outfit. God. I'm surprised she's not dressed <laughs> up. Cause yeah, no. poor dog, you know, I got a 50 pound child. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. What, what I was saying before, before I get distracted by the cute Sorry. dog. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Um, so I'm going to go through every Poshmark listing in, in the description box that's below, like describing the item once you click on it. I'm going to tab down or put little dots. I'm not sure if it'll let me tab down, but I'm going to add every keyword that applies to those items because now oh, I've been seeing cool. with my good titles how well it's pulling in Google. And I know if I add more keywords in those descriptions, it's going to be incredible for search in Poshmark and out of Poshmark. And I think my sales are going to really spike if I do that. So like, you're yeah. not going to explain to the customer what you're doing in your description. You're just going to kind of like tab down and just like, yes, words, comma, comma, comma. Like I can show you guys what I want to do. Hang on. Um, how do I screen share? Chat. Screen it's, share. You're just essentially just putting as many identifiers in there as you can. Um, anything that you think that somebody would look for when so, they're, when they're see after an item. Yeah. All right. So let's go to my closet here. Oh, so like this dress, this is a really expensive dress. So is this one. If I went in to edit it, like instead of just having the title, I want to go down. Oh yeah. It's not going to let me, it's going to make me just put everything right there. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, well, maybe it will. Okay, good. It only lets me go down one, but I just wanted to put like tons of keywords down here, like career dress, chief dress, like just tons of stuff so that if someone searches for that specific thing with my brand, I'll be the first thing that comes up. And this is probably like geek speak for most people and they probably think I'm boring, but I know it'll work. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. So um, make an offer probably wouldn't be good keywords, huh? <laughs> so I saw somebody on Poshmark and, and I guess all of their listings, the first words were make an offer. So I thought, you know what, let me try that. <laughs> so um, I tried it like, on five items and it's not, not really doing anything. <laughs> Cause I don't want it to look like, unprofessional or trashy yeah either, if people click to learn more about it so, so are you saying my listings look trashy no i i, th I think when you i think when you start an item out and this is just my opinion i think if you start your item out or your description out with make an offer you automatically just devalued your item okay i'll go fix it but i shared this you know for everyone's knowledge yeah i'm talking about the people that like keyword spam like when you click, there's no actual information about the item. Like it's just a bunch of junk. Right. Like I don't want my listings to look like that. So I'm really going to have to play with it before I do it to all of them and decide how I want that to look or the keywords that I decide to use in there, how many I will. So yeah. And you could always add like, instead of just putting the keywords, you could say something like seller notes, you know, colon and then type them. That way the potential buyer doesn't get confused maybe what you're doing i don't know that's a really good idea or i could even write keywords and then do that item description keywords yeah that's a good idea you'll have to let us know how that works for you lauren yeah i will on the next poshmark talk yeah, if you, you, sales, a lot of if you really increase your sales let us know yeah, yeah. Um, do you do anything like that, Tammy? I mean, is, is there anything you do to kind of help uh, you know, um, stimulate sales? 
in my description, I try to use, like you all do, I try to use as many keywords as I can to describe that. So that way when people are searching, you know, I try to use like short sleeve or sheath dress, like Lauren said, or, you know, whatever the item is, I try to just use as much as I can. You know, I, <laughs> I listed a couple of scarves. I've got a couple of scarves listed and I didn't really know. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of keywords you can use with a scarf other than the color. Right. Right. You know, I have a couple on there that are handmade that I made and I just put like the stitch that it's crocheted, the color of it. So, you know, I, I didn't really know a whole lot of keywords to use for a scarf. You know what I'm saying? Right. I learned tonight what a sheath dress was. So this show has been very informative. <laughs> I should not, as a male, I should not know what a sheep dress. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there. Well, you never know. You might come across a really good deal or something. And have no. To no, that's an area that I look nothing at. I just knew if I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, why is that weird six foot five guy looking at dresses? <laughs> and he has heels in his hand. What is going on? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so Tammy, were there any brands that you feel like that have tanked for you? Like just stuff that you used to pick up and maybe you don't anymore? Um, well, I really haven't, like I said, I haven't been selling on it too, too long. So I'm still trying to learn uh, some brands, but um, you know, I don't know what you guys think, but do you guys think that Michael Kors is kind of not selling as well as it used to? Yeah, I think so too. It's kind of gone down a little bit. I know that the clothing doesn't sell very good, but as far as like handbags and stuff, because it used to be, my course used to be all the rage and the big hot thing, but now it seems like mm -hmm. it's not selling like it used to. Yeah, I don't even pick it up anymore if I see it. I stopped picking it up, I want to say two years ago. Oh gosh. <laughs> Just clothes or clothes and bags. Clothes and bags, the only thing that I can actually flip really well still is boots. Michael Kors boots. And it doesn't matter if they're like Michael, Michael Kors, Kors, like the higher brand, or like the real designer Michael Kors that's really expensive that they don't even sell anywhere except for like Neiman Marcus and Saks. But shoes, they always go well. Oops. And plus, you know, brands that, um, I don't know, I, in my area, I don't have, like, I can't find the really, really good brands in my area for some reason. It's just not, not available to me. So I just try to stick with more, you know, I guess mall brands. <laughs> Yeah. You know, they, they sell fairly good. They don't sell for a high amount of money, but if I can get them cheap enough, I can usually make a you know pretty good profit off of them. So I just try to stick with stuff like that. And then I also try to, you know, a couple of people that I follow on Poshmark, they don't really, they sell a lot and they don't really sell big name brand stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they just have really cute items in their closet. And I think a lot of people are not, that buy on Poshmark aren't really interested in the brands. They just want to go and get nice stuff for cheaper than what they can get it for in the mall. Am I wrong? Right. <laughs> yeah. So Robin Lewis is asking, how does Michael Kors jewelry sell? I can't say that I've ever sold any Michael Kors jewelry that I can think of off the top of my head. No, I haven't either, actually. Um, yeah, I haven't at all. Try it out. That's my advice. If you have some, get it listed and see if it sells. <laughs> Jewelry sparkly, you know. I mean, I'm sure it'll sell. <laughs> I actually did sell my first. You uh, last time we did a show back in September, you uh, issued me and Dwayne and oh, Lauren yeah, a, a challenge to to sell, to buy a piece of jewelry and to see if we could sell it. I so. did. I didn't yeah, sell it. I actually <laughs> did too, but I didn't sell mine on. Uh, on Posh on Poshmark, I ended up uh, selling it on eBay. The same person kept hitting me up over and over and over again for this piece, and it was like a Halloween piece. It was a JJ brand uh, piece of Halloween, uh, like a brooch, and I was just like, 
after it went past Halloween and I hadn't sold it on either platform, the same person hit me up again one more time and I, I just took their offer. I was like, okay, because I go, this thing is going to set for a year. There's no way that somebody's going to want this. So, good price, right? Didn't it sell for like eighteen dollars or something? Yeah, I, I mean, I got, I mean, I, I made about ten bucks on it, which you know, it's not a, not a, you know, not a home, but because I did kind of pay up for the piece a little bit. But you know, like I said, I, I'm a greenhorn. I know absolutely nothing about jewelry. I just thought it was a neat piece. You gave me a challenge. I'm all about accepting challenges and stuff like that. So, you know, I figured, you know, I'll see what happens. And I did kind of price it a little high because I figured, you know, Halloween's coming. It was that type of piece. I took a really good photo of it. And, uh, yeah, I did get some interest. I got a lot of really low balls on Poshmark, and I just couldn't get no one to uh, jump on it. But, yeah, I was super happy on eBay that it did finally go. So, you know, I, I was cool with it. Yeah, I'm surprised, like, some of the things that I double list that will sell on eBay that did not sell on Poshmark. So, yeah, I think it's worth it to cross post your items for sure. I, I cross post every single item that relates to Poshmark from from eBay. As soon as I put it on eBay, it goes immediately to Poshmark. I, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, that's and smart to do it all on the same day. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's basically I'm, I'm getting two sets of eyes on my item for something that takes me probably an additional two minutes to do. I already have the listing up. I already have the photos in my know am i right in front of me and what have you so it just makes total sense just copy and paste throw the throw the stuff all over and upload my photos and i'm done and it's it, you know i just know that any piece of clothing or that sort of item as soon as it sells on either platform that i immediately have to go check the other platform and get it off there it's just i'm just in a habit now of doing that as soon as that happens i just immediately go check the other platform and, and remove it so and it's super fast if you guys have the apps on your phones it takes no time at all to end an item yeah See, and I do everything with my with my laptop. I think it's it's so much easier for me with my laptop because I can just you know I can just highlight it, and plus I put all my photos all go into a folder um, on my laptop, so I've already I can just you know click them all at once and then just hit one button and it uploads all of them at once. You know, yeah. But it does go pretty quick. And then uh, touch on your question though about we were talking about brands that kind of not doing as well or have kind of tank for you. Uh, for me, uh, the one I've really noticed the most is Orvis. Um, the current now, it, actually, um, I can screen share this cause it's now not all Orvis, but, um, Costco is actually taken over. Um, they've been selling a lot of the Orvis stuff, but they only sell one line of Orvis. And so pretty much anything from that line, I just can't get rid of anymore. Cause I think everybody now relates to it as a Costco item and it's just completely devalued. Um, but like if you have the older Orvis stuff, the one with the tags where it has like a fishing net and like the fly rod and stuff, more vintage Orvis or older stuff, that stuff does really well, but I will show you the tag that I'm, I'll just pull up one of my things real quick. I'll do a quick screen share. Um, share. Okay. Um, okay. This tag right here, um, on like uh, the Orvis stuff, it's the Orvis Sporting Traditions. I don't know if you guys see that. Yeah, we see it good. Yeah, so that tag there is, those are the items that Costco is selling is the ones with this tag right here. And it seems like for whatever reason now, I cannot move the Orvis stuff with this line. And I don't have any of the items in my closet here that, because that stuff sells. Um, I could get rid of it really quick um, with the older, more vintage tag. But, and then I guess, I guess while we're here, um, you guys can see kind of how I have like this whole thing is all just kind of filled out. Over here, this is kind of how I do my my whole description area. So you know, I have you know all my measurements in there. I, I even put like condition and you know and stuff like that. Um, and uh, copy you know, like, that from your uh, eBay description. Yep, this is exactly how my eBay descriptions are. Actually, my eBay description is just a tab longer because I just have um, like come check out my store for additional um, items from designers like you know, and I'll have like you know other designers like you know, listed in there or whatever. So they can, you know, go to check out my closet or not my closet, but my store on eBay. But, you know, I try to just put as much stuff as I can in here. And like I said, I don't, I forget how many characters that they give you, but, um, and, and you know, it's, you know, you know, use stuff like this, like, you know, very good, like new condition. And I probably shouldn't use that because that is subjective, I guess. But I, I try to put that, you know, I mean that, you know, my item is in, you know, really good shape or condition or what have you. And I still get people all the time. Is this new? Is that no? Right. It's you know. I mean, it's, it's, so amazing. Yeah. Let me let me get up. Let me stop sharing here. Okay. All right. But yeah, it's it's uh it, it's crazy. I get people all the time. I, I I even got another one today. Um, on just a Ralph Lauren quarter zip sure says, "Is this new?" And I didn't even have anything in there that says anything. It's like, well, I would yeah. list it as 
new because they give you that option. But, you know, it is what it is. All the time I get this. Can you please send me a picture of the real item, not the stock photo? And See, I'm like, and look. <laughs> now, now I don't know. If, I don't know if you've seen that in my thing. I actually wrote photos are of the actual item. I actually oh, had that right next gosh, to it. So it's like that. very good. Yeah, I actually put it in parentheses. Photos are of the actual item um, because I used to get that all the time, and now I don't. I don't get that so much anymore. Because yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that that's it's a <laughs> stock photo or whatever. So. But I would have to do that um, on an individual basis because for Poshmark, <clears throat> I know we've been talking about this lately. Um, I do use some stock photos for Poshmark. Right. Oh, that's that's some. See, we could we could touch on this. Did you yeah. did you look into that any anymore, Tanya? I did not. Um, like I said, I've always heard that as long as you include your own pictures as well, that it's okay. Um, and I have heard that you maybe shouldn't use it as your first picture, but I do. <laughs> right. I, I think I have one. What's that one? But I only use it for new with tag stuff. If yeah. I haven't used thing, I won't do it. So maybe that's why no one's taking mine down because it's new. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then before I forget, I wanted Tammy to share her story with us about uh, bundles and shipping. Just uh, real quick. And she also has a video about it on her channel. If you guys want to check it out. Yeah, well, actually, I have two stories. I'll tell you one that, that happened, too, that it's just real quick. I had a vintage coach purse listed, and I had sent out offer to likers, and I had a girl decline that offer and offer me more. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've never had that happen before. <laughs> I thought that was so strange. I was like... Why is she offered me more money? Why would she want to pay me more money for it? But she did. I accepted it. So you think she misread it or something? Huh? You think she misread it? I don't know. But she offered me like $10 more than what I was had sent the offer out for. She like declined it and then offered me $10 more than what I had offered. I'd be like, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> no, the shipping thing that happened with me. I had somebody bundle five things and two of them were heavy leather purses, a pair of shoes, a pair of jeans and like a coin pouch. And it, she, she gave me, she offered a pretty good offer for it. So I debated on it a little bit and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. So I accepted it. Well, after I accepted it, realized when I started packing it up, it was going to weigh more than five pounds. <laughs> So she paid the six ninety five shipping, but I ended up having to pay an extra sixteen dollars on top of her six ninety five to ship it. Yeah, that's crazy. Because it weighed, um, let's see, it weighed eight point six pounds, but because their increments are only by pounds, they don't do ounces. I had to bump it up to nine pounds, and to Add additional shipping for the overage was like fifteen ninety six on top of her six ninety five that I was responsible for. So I said, you know what? Next time, <laughs> if somebody does that, I'm going to go get all my stuff together, put it in a box, and weigh it before I accept the offer to make sure <laughs> that I counter offer to cover that overage because I, you know, and I thought, you know, oh, it's it's over, it's but it won't be too bad. You know, it's only like two two point six pounds over. Right. Never even dreamed that it was going to be that much money extra for just yeah. that little bit of overage. Yeah, that's wow. So that's Krillin amazing. was asking, why didn't you use two boxes? Hey, I'm sorry. He he asked, why didn't you use two boxes? I don't know that you could have because you wouldn't have been able to get another label, right? No, you can't. You can only print out one label. I'm right about that, right, Lauren? Yeah, you could maybe Franken box and make like a huge box, but. Or a flat rate box. I don't think Poshmark knows about the flat rate boxes or they're not willing to use them. And here's the thing. I, had some, I had somebody ask a question. Why couldn't you tell the, the um, person that bought it to split it up into two different bundles? So that way it would be $6.95 on each. But to do that, that would be so much trouble because I'd have to can they'd have to cancel their order. 
Right. Then they'd have to go back in. They'd have to add some to one, some to another. It, should, it would just be such a hassle for them to yeah. have to do Well, that. actually, though, if, if they did it that way, though, then they would actually be paying like 12 something shipping by putting all five items in the thing and doing They're only paying the one shipping fee. That's right. So they're actually saving money by, yeah, I mean, I, I know I myself wouldn't want to do that because it's like, well, why would I want to pay 12 when I could pay six? Well, and and here's the thing. They said what, what you could do is just go ahead and you pay that extra six ninety five on the one. But yeah, still, it would be such a hassle to do that. Right. To ask you wouldn't be covered through Poshmark if it was lost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it would be their word against you. Yeah, that was, my, <laughs> that was my shipping <laughs> blunder. I won't let that happen again. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why you gotta um, do this. Save all your boxes. Every time I get something, I even if it's like a weird shaped box, I save it because I will end up using it someday. Yep, I do too. I save all mine. <laughs> and Lauren, did you want to share your Instagram post? Oh yeah. So today I posted on Instagram because I've been having this problem just this month. I think people are just trying to clear their houses for the holidays. But I posted on Instagram, how do you say that you don't want people to give you inventory or that you don't want to sell things for people like family and friends? Like, I don't want to offend them and say, I don't want your stuff. But when right. someone's giving me a huge bag of like stuff from Kohl's and they're like, oh, will you sell this for me? Or they want me to buy it. I, so, I was just honest. <laughs> I, I'm always honest. Like. I just tell my family members and my friends, I'm like, I just tell them I'm really drowning in my own inventory. I have so much stuff I need to get listed. Um, I saw that Luke from Endless Entrepreneurs offered that they might help to um, teach them to sell on Poshmark or um, yes. maybe move it locally to offer other suggestions is really a good idea to do too. That's that's what I do. I just got approached the other day about buying a bunch of American Eagle jeans and all this and stuff, you know, is, is uh, a friend of the family is like, hey, my kid's got all these American, these really nice high end jeans. Those, uh, oh, what are they called? Yes. Uh, American Eagle. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like and he, goes, he goes, would you be interested in those? He goes, he goes, you know, he goes, also, I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, I go, I go, and I tell him, I go, honestly, I go, for your boy and your boy's size, I go, it would be it'd be in your best interest. I go just put them up on you know our our local Facebook uh, buy sell trade page. You know, I mean we got like a marketplace or whatever. I go just put them on there. Put them on Spring Cleaning Exchange. I go people will buy those. And he goes, well, I got a bunch of you know football cleats and stuff like that too. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want your beat up football cleats because those aren't <laughs> worth any money either. And I'm like, just put them on there. I go, I'm, people will buy them on there. I go because I go, I'm gonna insult you. I go if I give you an offer. I said unless you're giving them to me. And I go, I really don't want them. You know, I go, I don't want to insult you because I said, I have a price point, which I buy that stuff for. And I said, because, and, and I just told him, I said, I said, honestly, it is the quickest way for me to get out. I go, for me, those jeans aren't worth anything. I go, it's just not the type of, you know, item I buy. Now I do buy American Eagle. Don't get me wrong people, but you know, it's just, it was my way of, yeah, I really don't buy those. I buy different, you know, different stuff. And, you know, and, and I'm sure he's going to want five, $10 a pair for these jeans. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, oh, paying, yeah. not, not for American Eagles. It's not happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about you, Tammy? Uh, what? Like when um, your friends, your neighbors or family ask you if you would be willing to sell some of their items. Um, for them? Well, I'll ask them, you know, what do you have? And when they tell me, then I usually will just say, well, you know, Poshmark, is really it's kind of hard to sell those brands or you know i i i kind of like you i'm drowning in my own stuff <laughs> i can't really take on anymore <laughs> i know oh yeah I, I i try to i try to avoid that but i you know i found a new person on youtube and i cannot remember her youtube channel name but she is actually, she did a whole entire video on taking other people's clothing on consignment and selling it on Poshmark and did a whole breakdown of how she would present it to them as far as like what her portion would be and what their portion would be. Yeah. yeah, I think that's awesome if you can't find your own inventory for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't find your own inventory, I think that's great. But my God, I think it would still have to be like a 60 40 split. You know, I mean, me 60, them 40, because yeah. I'm doing all the work. I, I assume all risk. 
Yep. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing everything. That's just, you're just handing me some stuff. Right. You know, so yeah, that's, and I, I think most people would be like, yeah, I'm not doing 60, 40, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. So it's a good way to it's a good way to you know shoo them along. Sorry, Tanya. Yeah. That's okay. I got to call out Curlin eight seven six eight seven six. He sent a five dollar super chat, and he says, "I tell the friends and family that the items are not unique enough, not cheap. I tell them people only buy online that they can't get all, at the mall. That's a good point. Definitely. Good. The hardest for me of declining, even if people want to give me things is that people know that I buy things. Like I have my own website where people fill out a form and like I'll go in actually to their house and go through their stuff and buy things from them. Really? So I think that just yeah, like this is, this is rejecting new. <laughs> someone yeah, you're making that just stuff, <laughs> I just feel like I'm super offensive to the people that know that I do that if I'm like, oh yeah, thanks, but no thanks. It's the Minnesota nice. I can't get over it. I just need to be like, nope, done. <laughs> but Honestly, I had a bunch I think of that's other a, tips That's a great too. idea, though, to, to, to have that out there. But I mean, you know, trying to, I guess, weed out the, the wheat from the shaft, though, would be a little difficult, yeah, though, yes. as well. I mean, definitely, if it's high-end uh, merchandise, you know, living in Houston, I should definitely do something like that for my area, too, uh, because there's definitely a lot of uh, well-to-do people in this area, for sure. And they probably think your stuff is not worth anything. They just donate it, probably. Almost all of my stuff that I get that way, though, it's word of mouth. Like, yeah. it's someone who knows someone who knows someone that I've bought stuff off of before. So. Right. And what do you typically offer? Like, what would be your price for something that you could sell for $300? 20 or 30 yeah, but see, that's good for something that you're just going to donate anyway if you don't want to take the time to list it yourself. I probably start out as less, and that's what I'll negotiate to. <laughs> because if people bring this stuff to like a, like a Plato's Closet or something like that, they'll give mm -hmm. them a dollar or two. Yeah. So if you ever do buy stuff off people, keep that in mind because if, even if you pay like two more dollars than someone else would pay, if you know you're going to get the money back. Yeah, especially if they kind of t tip their hand and, and say that, well, I was just going to take this to Goodwill. So you're like, oh, so you're already willing to take nothing for this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. And again, I don't have time for that really right now. I got to get my own oh my stuff. God, no. <laughs> I yeah. actually had a really good comment on my Instagram. And then I got the a very similar comment several after that. But to just take it. If it's free, just take it and then go donate it and get the donate tax credit and the donate Goodwill coupon. So then you get, like in Minnesota, you get a 20% off coupon for every bank you donate to Goodwill. Oh, nice. So that's worth it. Yeah. That would the problem be great. right now is I just have no time, as we were talking about earlier before the show. <laughs> so it would have to sit in my house for like a month before I could go donate it. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, if somebody's just giving you stuff, it would be hard to tell them no because you don't want to hurt their feelings right yeah, but then, like, okay, come back. <laughs> right but okay so lauren what if the friend like a month later says hey so how'd that go were you able to sell any of that stuff i gave you <laughs> exactly. what would you say exactly and that's where i don't know what to do i just i don't know yeah. it's just yeah. awkward it's so awkward <laughs> yeah i mean i, I almost I almost missed a, a good opportunity like that because somebody approached me here over the summer and they said, Hey, you know, I only sell on eBay. I got all these DVDs that I need to get rid of. I'm like, I don't want your, D you know, in my head, I'm like, I don't want your DVDs because I know they're not worth it. They like, and I was like, ah, I go, I don't know. I got a lot of videos. Well, they're all new sealed and they're all like brand new. And I'm like, and, and then I was like, wait a minute. I go, they're, they're what? They're brand new? He goes, yeah, they're all like really old ones. They're all box sets. They're all sealed. I'm like, oh, well, what do you want? Just bring some over. I go, well, I'll, I'll throw you a number. And, you know, I almost missed it because, you know, I, I took that that kind of approach to it. I was like, yeah, I don't want your crap. And especially I don't want all your old DVDs that aren't worth anything. But, it, you know, I, I made a ton of money off of that stuff, you know, I mean, this, you know, this summer. But and they were just really essentially just wanting them out of their house and wanted to get rid of them. And I'm like, sweet. But yeah. yeah, it is. It's it's really hard to politely tell someone that, yeah, you don't want their, their crap. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. but I do, I do like the idea though, the, the, how you put it, Tanya is, yeah, I mean, I'm already drowning in my own stuff. I, you know, I would right. love to take this off your hand, but I just, I really can't. Right. And I don't know, like a lot of my uh, girlfriends that live on my street, they know that like, I, you know, I'm always at Goodwill. Like I don't mind taking the stuff that they don't want. If they want to throw their bags in my car, you know, I'll donate it for them. I don't even mind. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I have one neighbor. She's like, take what you want and donate the rest. <laughs> so she's real sweet. I have a story about that. My uh, husband uh, saw a girl at the grocery store that I used to work with and when I worked in the banking industry and she knew a lady that was getting rid of a bunch of her mother's stuff. Um, her mother had passed away, you know, several months back and she was just, they were going in and cleaning her house out and she had tons and tons and tons of clothes and shoes new with tags had never even been worn. She was a evidently shopaholic and loved to go shopping and said it was, you know, some pretty good brands. So I went up there and ended up, I spent a hundred dollars and walked out of there with like three big lawn bags full of shoes and clothes. A lot of them new with tags. So I scored on that. I've already sold some of the shoes on Poshmark. So that was pretty good. <laughs> I think Poshmark is a great plan for for getting rid of shoes. Uh, I sell a ton of shoes on Poshmark. I, I love that platform for unloading shoes. Macari's good for shoes too. Is it? But this is a Poshmark show. We keep forgetting. <laughs> We're giving them all love, Tanya. We're giving them all love. <laughs> I think Poshmark's the best for shoes. Um, I don't know if everybody in the chat follows me on Instagram or not. If you don't, you should, because I post most of the stuff that I pick up on Instagram. And if you want, click on my YouTube channel because my Instagram's linked and follow me on Instagram. But the Rothy's that I picked up at Goodwill, I can't even remember what I paid for them. It was like less than $5. I took a picture of them on the seat of my car, listed them in Poshmark that day. I was going to keep them for myself. Super happy I listed them. They sold them less than 24 hours for 100 Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. More than that. Now I want to look. Hang on. <laughs> And by the way, the links to everyone's channels, YouTube channels, are in, is in the description box down below. Um, they sold for ninety nine dollars. Nice. And I mean, awesome. I could have listed those on eBay or another platform; they wouldn't have moved that fast. So, what was the brand again? Rothy. R O T H Y. S. I don't know that I've ever heard of that brand. I have to look it up. They go for big money. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yes. But I mean, if you know you have something and you think it's going to sell right away, list it in your car. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. I've done that before, definitely. Like I've put a bracelet on the uh, dashboard of my car. <laughs> it didn't sell right away, but it did. Nice. Like, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fun story to tell no matter what, either way, right? Yeah, totally. Well, speaking of something selling quick, um, I had a Brighton backpack that I had had forever. And I just kept putting it off, putting it off, listing it. So finally, the other day, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get that out. Go ahead, get pictures of it and get it, get it listed. Well, I did. And as soon as I hit the list button, I set my phone down. And within like two seconds, somebody bought it like that. Oh my god! I gosh. thought to myself, yeah. how did you, how did they buy that that quick? They didn't even have a chance to look at it. It was that fast. What did you sell it for? Um, I'm thinking it was like 36 or something. It was an older one. I um, mean, it was the, um, it wasn't leather. It was that, um, uh, what's that called? That, that was backpack. Was it like a sling backpack? Huh? Was it like a sling backpack? Which is no, it, was a, it was a regular backpack. Okay. It was red and had like a floral design on it. Um, it was really pretty. It was like the nylon kind of backpacks, not okay. leather. And, uh, but it was funny because after she bought it and I sent it to her when she got the item and I got my money, she left me a one star review. And she oh. said that everything, she even said in the review that everything was fine on my end. They just decided they didn't like it. Well, then why did you give me a one star review? Because you didn't like it. That's not my fault. <laughs> right. I've had a couple like that too. Like I had one lady give me 
a one star review, but then she wrote me a love note and she's like, oh, this was beautiful. I loved it. It didn't fit me, but I gave it to my daughter and she loves it. And I'm like, what? Why did you give me one star then? <laughs> yeah. I'm right. just going to get an oddball once in a while, I think. Yeah. But, it was, that was weird. I was like, why are you giving me a one star when you didn't like it? <laughs> And you even said in the in the description in the love note that everything was fine on my end. <laughs> crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um, I did want to get to um, a couple of the questions we had in the chat. And earlier the trending queen had asked why I should want to be an ambassador. Any benefits? Lauren, you want to take that one? Um I guess because I was kind of shooed into being an ambassador right away. I don't really know for sure what the benefits would be other than that. I would think Poshmark would back you more, like especially if you had buyer dis disputes, like if someone opened a case against you. But I used to be a suggested user, what they called it before they had the ambassador program. That was like much harder to achieve. They actually had to choose you to do that. Um, but I'm actually looking right now to see if well, I think that one of the benefits what? would be like, you know, people will start following you. You get a lot more followers. That was, that was the number one thing that I noticed when I got it was right. my the, my number of followers increased. Um, yeah, Tremendous. especially in like the first couple of weeks, it was like they really pushed you, I think. And man, yeah, I had a ton of followers. It was like it was getting like 100 a day, you know, what I mean, or more just it was like all, you know, just I would get a ton of followers every day where before I was never getting that kind of. Um, exposure. Right. And so then um, you get more eyeballs on the stuff that you're selling and more yeah. uh, chances for a potential sell, I believe. Yeah, I had it not too long ago and I'd go to bed, wake up the next morning, I'd have like 350 notifications on Poshmark. <laughs> and I, it did that for like days on end. And then, yeah. of course, it finally started kind of slacking off some. But yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I still have all my um, notifications for Poshmark turned on. Like, I like to know when somebody follows me. So every time somebody follows, I still always get too. Yeah, me too. Because I think the reason that I didn't notice a difference was because of the suggested user thing. And I usually list things every day. Yeah. And I do know just before they even had ambassador status that listing really makes you get more followers. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that too. And it's they must have listening. some kind of a. We'll follow you. It just must be something in the algorithm that exactly. just pushes it to you. But I know, and it's so easy for us to sit here and say it. I know it is for me. Like, list at least one item every day on each platform, but I'll be darned if I do it. Yeah, I, try I, to take too. <laughs> I try to take pictures like a ton in a batch. And then I try to slowly list all those like all week, like I'll spend one day just doing pictures and measurements and then I'll do like 10 listings a day every day yeah. or more. I'm, if I can I'm, more, I'm more of a week, I'm more of a weekend lister, like a possibly, you know, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, you know, that sort of, occasionally I might hit like one day during the week, but it's very, very rare that I get anything up during the week. So it's, I try to get all my stuff done at least, or at least photos taken during the week. So that yeah, what I'm, on my downtime or doing whatever then I can take and I can at least get all my listings done on the weekend. Okay. So Dwayne, why are you asking how could I be nicer on posh <laughs> or did somebody else say that? Why is he saying that? Do y'all see in the chat where he said that? I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I see it. <laughs> oh, he said someone left him a comment that said not very friendly at all, but I did receive them. Thank you. And then he goes, oh. don't <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What did he say? You. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. That's Maybe great. you should have wrote them a little love letter, Dwayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah not enough love letters. <laughs> oh my god. I don't do the ribbon thing, but I do do the tissue paper. And if they spend a decent amount of money, you know what I've been doing with those scarves that I got out of the dumpster? I've been including a scarf, a free scarf. Oh, that's how I have to get rid of those. I have like 40 of them. <laughs> uh, you guys go check out the Dollar Tree dumpsters. There's like free gifts to give away. <laughs> Here's your dumpster scarf. <laughs> Thank you for your purchase. Here's your <laughs> They were in a dumpster. Okay, in my defense, they were in my clean bag. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I miss you guys. 
Oh it was my. sad not having your show in October. <laughs> 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 the excellent. internet missed this like really come on oh my god <laughs> okay now we have another one from um lydia a purple lily asked are there any brands that are banned from being sold on poshmark like that was a great brands question brands? um so i don't i don't really know of any do you guys well, essentially not even just brands is there just a straight out like a barrel type of uh list you know what i'm saying for poshmark you know what i mean I just certain I don't think that there is. I've literally sold almost every brand that would possibly have something like that associated with it. And I I don't think that they have anything like that yet. If they get as big as eBay and they go international, they probably will. I think the main reason eBay does that is because of international listings. Right. Yeah. If, even if they just do Canada, I think it'll still be fine. But if they start doing overseas, I think that's where the problem no, is. Is the Canada went live yet? I don't know. What Jory? Is Jory in the chat? No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I think we would have heard, right? That's big news. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now, will that be just Canada to Canada sellers, or will that be like, will US, will we be able to take and send to Canadian buyers? That's a good I point. Heard, yeah, we'll have some I kind hope. of shipping. I but hope it's just supposed to be on top of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or if they could just get charged like an extra two dollars or something for shipping through posh if it's going to canada like that'd be yeah cool. that'd be tricky yeah. at first like i'd rather wait for somebody else's story how that oh, went i think doing. it i think it actually it's like more expensive for us to send to canada than what it is for canadians to send here correct i think canadian post is like really really cheap but for us to send there it's quite expensive i think mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Dwayne says he does send a thank you for buying for me sticker. Oh well, now at 4.8 rated. Okay, I just gotta be, I just gotta say something totally off the wall right now. So do you guys ever watch Black Mirror? <laughs> like on um, Netflix, have you ever seen yes, Black I've Mirror? I've watched a few episodes of that. We've watched all of the episodes. I love Black Mirror. Okay, and there's this one episode that we watched recently. I think it was either season four or five. I can't remember which. But, um, and it's this thing to where everybody has this little machine and you get to rate people based on how your interaction was with them. And when he said he was a 4.8, I'm thinking 4.8 is a really good number. <laughs> but if so, you're- so, like, so if you meet someone that's like a total DB, you can uh, give them like, you know, a one or whatever yeah. you're like. And you yeah. hear the noise, like they can hear you give them a rating and go doo doo doo. <laughs> I watched that episode. That episode was so crazy. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love that show. Um, oh, and then I wanted to point out that uh, Rod at Win by Doing had said earlier um, in regards to what Tammy had said about her bundles and shipping was, he says, I think they make money from shipping, which is why they limit shipping choices. Talking about Poshmark. So that might be true. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think, I think they do. So. I, I think they have negotiated shipping, which I, I think eBay could do as well, um, just like Amazon does with UPS and what have you. I mean, they're they're huge players in that market. That yeah, I mean, they have the power to negotiate, so I'm sure that they're making money on it, you know. And they're still able to give us a discount. So, right. And I actually had a question about the flat rate boxes because we kind of touched on that a little bit. You mentioned it earlier, Tanya, about the flat rate. Yes. If you were to put something in a flat rate and send it, I wasn't really sure how this worked. Like if, if you, if it weighed more than five pounds because it's in a flat rate box would the flat rate. Okay. I don't know. Cost apply or no, it wouldn't. I, I wouldn't think so. And the only reason why is because they because they don't know when you go and print your label that you're putting it in a flat rate box. Yeah. So on I, e, like on eBay, you select the box that you're putting it, so it right. knows what to charge you for shipping. On Poshmark, it has no idea that you're putting it in a padded bubble mailer or your flat rate box, or if you're just shoving it in an old Amazon box or what you're putting it in. So yeah, they wouldn't know unless well, they get you that option. Is if the postal worker saw that it was in a flat rate box, even though they scanned the Poshmark label, but they saw that it was in a flat rate box. Now, possibly if you took it to the window and had them take care of it there, but if you try to print your label from home, I think that's where the, you would have a, yeah. a, a difference. Different, okay. And I actually but, did make that mistake recently. Like I had a bundle sell with five items also, 
I told you, Tammy, and I just completely forgot about the whole five pound thing. I mean, it happens. Okay. I forgot you guys. And so I just, my natural instinct was this is all going to fit in a flat rate box. And I put the sticker on it and I already got good feedback. So I guess nobody noticed and I know better now. So, but still, I don't agree with having to pay $16 to ship so something. It, so it weighed more than five pounds, but it still went. I didn't never even wait it because I knew it was in a flat rate box. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, actually, I, I take that back. I think I did weigh it, but I think it only weighed five pounds with everything in it. But I, I didn't really worry about it because there's like a 50 pound weight limit or something, yeah. right? See, that's what I wondered because if it was in a flat rate box, as long as it's under that 50 pounds, but yeah. then there's the Poshmark label for $6.95 and I don't know. It was just, it was kind of confusing to me. I was like, wait a minute now. <laughs> I had a total blonde moment, you guys. And I forgot. And like I said, I'm always honest in case there's somebody else out there who's made the same mistakes too. So I know better now. Yeah. Um, and then I noticed that uh, Sam had asked in the chat if you could sell jewelry and watches on Poshmark and you definitely can. Sam Kinnison asked that. Yeah. Definitely can. And vintage jewelry too. You can sell pretty much anything on Posh, honestly, except for hard goods. Right. I just always remember it's like stuff you can wear. If you can wear it on your body, you can probably sell it on Poshmark. Well, yeah. that's not altogether true because there's all kinds <laughs> of hard goods on Poshmark that I see people selling it, even yeah. Posh ambassadors that are well, selling it. Yeah. I know what they're people are so tempted to do it because it sells mm -hmm. it right? does. with coffee mugs because they sell on Poshmark. Hey, you know what? When I first, when I first got going on there, yeah, I was putting that stuff on there. I'm guilty myself because it was like, you know, it's selling, but I didn't even think anything of it. And then Lauren was like, Hey, if you want to, <laughs> if you don't want to get in trouble and you want to make ambassador and you're putting yourself out there, like what I do, she goes, you really should take that off. And, and you know, so I did. And, you know, plus um, you said that uh, you don't get, um, Oh, what do you want to call it? Uh, host picks either. If you're, if you don't have not, if you have non-compliant closets and I was like, well, yeah, I go, I would like to get my, you know, my stuff promoted with host picks and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I haven't got one of those in a long time. How about y'all? It's, be, it's been a little while. How can you be a posh ambassador and sell hard goods? I think that they probably got it before they got the posh ambassador. Like they're listing after the fact. If that makes sense. Right. And it looks like Poshmark would take that away from them if they're selling hard goods. They'll just close more. your account. All it takes is more than one person reporting your account and they'll close it. Yeah. And that's why you don't want to risk your account once you become an ambassador selling stuff like that because you put so much time into it. It's a lot of work to become oh an ambassador. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. And it's very frustrating to see other people on there that are able to sell stuff that I don't want to sell because I don't want to risk my account right. well you could technically create another account i mean i don't know if you have time for that but oh no i don't have time for that i don't either <laughs> i don't have time for one account let alone, let alone managing ebay and poshmark and then and then i'm trying to think about getting on either etsy or macari and i'm like well what am i doing to myself i'm like i don't have time for the oh two my that gosh. i'm on andy you are not on macari i know everybody keeps telling me i gotta get it so okay in your your honest opinion do you think i should go at least with macari first over etsy or etsy macari i think you would definitely benefit better over on macari than etsy okay. i mean what kind of vintage items are you selling i, I mean i have like a, you know i have a lot i have a lot of vintage clothes shirts that sort of stuff plus you know i sell a lot of vintage hats and you know what have you so i honestly think your pictures are so amazing you're going to do good on any platform you try i really do believe that all right. Yeah, you do have really good pictures. Thank you. You know, and the thing with Etsy is you can set your price and people are not going to haggle with you. Um, Macari, um, people people are going to haggle with you like they do on Poshmark. So Macari is a lot like Poshmark, so it's a, it's a oh, set of, and then a little bit wheel, not, wheel and deal. It's not quite as social as Poshmark. You can promote your items, okay, sure. um, you know, and I do do that. And that's another well, way for you to get. What are, what are the fees? And I know this is Poshmark show, but I'm actually kind of curious. That's one of the great things about Macari. The fees on Macari are only 10%, whereas on Poshmark, it's 20%. Right. That's great. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> just have to decide whether or not. How, how does shipping then work? Is shipping then. Right. So you can either do free shipping or you can charge them shipping. And with their shipping, 
you can choose uh, the United States Postal Service or you can use FedEx. Okay. And it's a little bit cheaper when you start getting like from three to eight pounds or three to 10 pounds. I can't remember sure, right sure. now. Um, then USPS. And so a lot of people choose that option. And in that case, uh, I usually draw my items off at my local Walgreens. Dwayne just put in the, in the chat that his only two complaints are uh, short descriptions and little to no search options. Yeah, so. they're definitely limited. It on Mercari is right. that when you search, sold stuff comes up. Like, I don't want to see sold stuff. And there's no, there's no filters there's on there. There is. There's all right. We're going to have to have a show called Macari Talk next where uh, I know, right? you guys all teach me how to do Macari. So we'll get back up. We'll, we'll, we'll cut this off because I don't want to lose anybody to do the Macari thing. But yeah, we'll definitely yeah, have to explore <laughs> yeah, this later. I'm, I'm very interested. Deb from Painting Pesos to come join us too because she yeah, loves great. Macari. Great. It's very similar to Poshmark okay. without sharing. Definitely. It's a lot of fun. I rather enjoy the short descriptions. <laughs> Because I can get stuff listed so fast. Like, I'm not even kidding. I can list like 20 items a day. Like, boom, boom, boom. I might get a lot of questions, but <laughs> it's fast to list and I really like it. Sam, Sam Kennison asked in the chat, how are payments made on Posh? Uh, super easy. You either get them direct deposit or right to your bank account or they will send you a check. You just request mm -hmm. which, which one you want. I like that because it doesn't go to, I don't have to mess with PayPal and what have you. Um, right. Yeah, I just I just go in and select a certain amount. I I've got quite a surplus in my thing. I, I almost use my uh, Poshmark anymore now as a savings account. I just let it kind of just build and build and build. And uh, yeah. uh, I, I'm kind of almost hoping for next year that Poshmark will just pay my taxes. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to kind of hopefully just let that fly, and then maybe at the end of the year I can just dump a large number of money or just have them send me a, a big old <laughs> check. And I was like, hey, taxes are done. <laughs> The best part is they take the fee out right away when you sell something. So you don't even have to worry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's the part that I absolutely love is there's no break. I, I mean, what you get is what you get. You know, it's all real cut and dry. And, and I know a lot of people freak out. They're like, well, it's 20%. Well, you know, when you really f factor in what it is on eBay, you know, I mean, you know, you've got basically 13% on eBay plus then you're paying for a store subscription that a lot of people don't factor into that, that percentage. And you still have, you know, there's still other fees. Final value uh, you, fee on shipping. You got final yeah. value fees. Yeah, there, there are a lot of other fees. So when you really average it out, you're probably paying about 17. You know, you're probably in that 17 to 18 percent overall on eBay versus a 20. And it's just so cut and dry on Poshmark. You know exactly where you're at. Yeah, I don't and like any surprises. You know, in the middle of the month, like I get with eBay. Right. <laughs> and you don't have to take back returns on Poshmark. Right. Within, so you're within reason. More fee, <laughs> you offer free returns on eBay, then you have to pay someone right. shipping to send that yeah. thing back to you. And it's just, uh, nope. Pain. I'll pay 20% for the easiness of Poshmark. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I, that is that is the one yeah. thing I absolutely love uh, about Poshmark. It is, it is so easy. It's very user friendly as a seller. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, as a buyer, for me personally, I have a harder time buying because I do know the return policy. So for me, I have to make sure that like an item is going to fit because I can't return it if it doesn't fit. And like, I, you know, I'm six foot five, you know, I mean, I'm 250 pounds. I'm a big guy, but you know, I have extremely long arms and men's shirts come in three sleeve lengths. You know I mean? It's usually like a 32, 33, uh, 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 34, 35, and a 36, you know, 37, you know, 30. So there's, I need a very long, you know, I can't just go buy a double X shirt. I need to know that. So if someone just lists their, you know, their Ralph Lauren polo shirt, their blue stripe Ralph Lauren, you know, double X, like, I don't know, you know, or, you know, if I go and buy this nice North face, you know, fleece, I need to know specifics on this. So I got to start asking questions or a lot of times I just don't buy from that person because it's like, I don't know if I'm going to get the right measurements and I can't return it if it doesn't come back, you know, if it doesn't show up the way that I want. Yeah. How do you measure your sleeves? What's that? How do you measure your sleeves? For for me on a, I actually have a video on my YouTube channel. Um, oh. I did it quite a while. It's how to properly measure uh, sleeves for a men's dress shirt. I show exactly how to do it and I actually um, show like I had like a, I think on one of the shirts is a Brooks brothers dress shirt and it actually shows it's like a 17, uh, 35 or 17-36 and 
the first number is your neck size on a dress shirt and the second number is actually a sleeve length well on a lot of shirts like that orva shirt i just showed it just shows extra large but on really nice dress shirts it'll have a second number and it'll tell you sleeve length well i'll show you how i could i show you in that video how to get that but you measure it from the center of the back right below the collar to the cuff most people measure sleeves from right here you know when they do their sleeve length they'll measure now on a sport coat or jacket, you may, you know, you you measure from here. But on like shirts, uh, any of my, you know, uh, anything with long sleeves, it's always center of the collar to the cuff. And any man who know who buys nice dress shirts or does, they know their sleeve length. So, right. and, but yeah, but it's typically it's usually like three three sleeve length sizes for you know men's dress shirts. So it's a very important measurement. That's a good tip. I need to always remember to include my measurements uh, for Posh and Macari because. I get in such of the habit of listing so fast that that's not something I, you know, I always include, but I definitely need. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of the things I even put like on my, in my description, I, I even put a little disclaimer, please double check your measurements with mine. Um, I even here, I'll, I'll actually just show you guys this real quick because it's just something I do. Uh, I, I do this on eBay and Poshmark, but I think this is, this is important. I, and this is just my opinion, but um, let me go back and share this real quick guys. Would you say Lauren, you're guilty too? I am of Poshmark, especially okay. if I haven't listed it on eBay yet, because I just so okay. So you guys can see this. This is that Orvis long sleeve dress shirt, right? So it looks like this. So in my description, um, I usually, you know, I have uh, actually, it's, um, I have, you know, kind of how everything's all measured out, and then I put we strongly urge customers to check their measure their measurements with ours to ensure a proper proper fit. Uh, but then anyway, at the bottom, my very last photo on all my stuff is I actually put this little guide on how to measure or how we get our measurements. And you can see on this oh, bottom one here, Mark. this actually shows how, how I um, get that sleeve measurement. But anyway, but you do, you measure from the center of the collar on the back to the, to the cuff. And that's how I, I get that measurement. But it also shows my customer how, how to take and do it when, you know, they're like, well, you know, because most people, a lot of people will measure from the sleeve, you know, from the, the hem of the sleeve. But I show them how I get the length and then I show them where I get, you know, my pit to pit measurement. So it's just, and I do this, I do this on my eBay stuff and I do this on, um, uh, you know, Poshmark as well. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really smart. I bet you have very little returns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to say anything because then I'm just going to jinx myself or somebody's going to, you know, they're like, oh. You don't have no returns, do you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, I mean, it just it's it's just another step or procedure that um, that I put in place to, to help minimize returns. You know, it's because you know I do get returns. Don't get me wrong, but it's you. It's usually never on an item doesn't fit. It's all you know. It's or it'll be like you know. Um, actually, in this video that I'm gonna put out, uh, I got a Ralph Lauren big pony shirt that I got returned on eBay. But it was returned on eBay. It's a double X big. Um, but the guy who bought it wears an extra large and he actually wrote me and he was like, he goes, Hey, he goes, I bought this. He goes, I normally wear an extra large, but for some reason I thought this would fit. I put the measurements there. It's not even your size. It, it's a two X big. It's not even just a two XL. It's a two X big. It's even, you know, bigger than normal. It, you know, I mean, it's a more blousey type of, but anyway, anyway, I relisted on Poshmark and they get sold like the day that I relisted it up there. But it's just kind of how I do things, but it, and it does. It just helps minimize the returns. Yeah, that's awesome. Such good information. Um, so did you guys have anything else that you wanted to add before we close it out? When is oh, Macari oh, going to be I on? <laughs> so Lauren, how long have you been selling on Poshmark? Since, hold on. I can't even remember now. I want to say like four years, three years. Okay. So I have a question about like, do you, do you seem to see sales pick up after Christmas because maybe people have gotten cash for Christmas and they're going on Poshmark and buying? Yes. And I also see more sales on the first or the 15th, the last day of the month. Oh yeah. yeah. Or like Thursdays because a lot of people get paid every Thursday. So if you're going to pick days to sell, like share your closet and you don't want to do it any other days, do it those days. 
Okay. I usually share mine at least a couple times a day, every day. That's good. <laughs> but I wondered, I wondered about that because, you know, I kind of had a dry spell there for a while and I had asked a question in the Poshmark Talk Facebook group and I had a, another posher reach out to me privately in a message and kind of gave me some tips and told me what to do. She said, I definitely didn't have enough followers. So I have been following, follow. And what I do is I'll go on the app and I'll go to find people and I'll follow all posh ambassadors. Oh, yeah. And then they'll go and they'll, you know, a lot of them will come and follow me back. So mm -hmm. that, but then also I just wondered, you know, because it's leading up to Christmas, I have this, my sales have improved because I've, you know, followed more people and gotten a lot more followers and plus mm -hmm. made Pasha faster. But I wondered if it got even better after Christmas. Yes. Because of people getting money for Christmas and they're like, oh, I'm going to go on Poshmark and buy that thing I wanted or, you know. <laughs> and be I sure and share at midnight and 1 a.m. for the drunk poshers. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I do that on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. New Year's, New Year's <laughs> Eve. Get those New Year's <laughs> Eve sales. Oh, to answer your question too, I've been on Poshmark on this main account that I have for four years, but it'll be five in a month. Wow. So, but I've actually been on there longer than that. I had a personal account that I would buy off of, but I wasn't really selling that I still have open in that I had had open for six and a half years. Then if this one's almost five years old. So That's amazing. Now, do you do posh full time or is that you're pretty much your full time gig? I'm a part time full time person. I have a full time job, but I feel like I work full time yeah. with my reselling too. Cause every minute I'm not at work, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So as you all know, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just wanted to remind everybody again that the links for everyone's YouTube channel is in the description box down below, as well as the link for our uh, Facebook group. It's called Poshmark talk. So if you haven't joined us over there, we'd love to see you join. And I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us in the chat today. We always love to see you guys. Um, and next time, next month for December, uh, we're hoping that Andy is going to host the show. <laughs> we're hoping if things calm down, I was supposed to have on my channel this this time, and it, it has been so crazy at my work. I worked almost a 12 hour day today. Uh, yeah, Andy was, does was, work full time. We have to get I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, most of you guys, I think I'll know I do work a full time job. Plus, uh, this is my side hustle, and I probably put just as many hours into this as uh, what I do. Um, I just I just left a little message for Lauren. Um, she asked me about that template. Um, if any of you guys follow me on Instagram or on Instagram or what have you, um, there is actually a blank template on my Instagram account. It's at Parrothead underscore Picker. You guys can go check that out. Just scroll way down toward the bottom. The template is there. Um, you guys can pull that off and you can add your own logo. You can just leave it blank, do whatever you want awesome, to. Um, I did you. make that available. Uh, I think I put that up quite a while ago. So, um, you know, if you guys want to use that, you're, you're free to, it's free to take and do what you want with. Um, so anyway, yeah. It, it, you guys Thank are, you, Andy. Yep, definitely. Yes, thanks. And I also want to say a special thank you to Tammy for joining us today. It was so nice to have you. Have you. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And we're also hoping that Mr. Dwayne Mothership Products will be with us next month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of the week, and we will see you guys next month. Thanks for joining Hopefully. us. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.